Welcome to Dell ATX Power Supply Hack Part 2, where I convert a computer power supply into a benchtop power supply for electronic projects. We ended Part 1 by looking at our wires and finding the AWG rating for each wire. We'll use this along with the AMP ratings to calculate out how many wires we need. We're going to look at the red wire which was an 18 gauge wire and had to carry 22 amps. Uh, by looking at this chart our 18 gauge wire can only carry 16 amps when being used in a chassis. So what we do is we look up and down the chart and we find something at or above 22 amps. It just so happens it's a 16 gauge wire. Now we want to go to the column that has conductor square inches and we want to take note of the conductor that we have and the conductor that will carry the right amount of amps. The number of 18 gauge conductors needed is the 16 AWG square inches divided by the 18 AWG square inches. That's going to come out to 1.58 conductors. Now obviously we don't have 0.58 conductors so we're going to round up to 2. Now we'll go back to our chart and compare the AWG to the amperage of the other wires. They are all below the max rating, so all we need is one of each of the other conductors. From our calculations, we could see that we only needed one of the yellow conductors. Uh, so here I'm clipping all but one of the yellow conductors off. In other videos, uh, people converting these power supplies, uh, people generally will leave all the wires on and it makes a wiring mess when they're done. Now that I've removed most of the wires, uh, the wiring looks very manageable. Now we must take a look at the ground and calculate out how many we need. So the ground, what we need to do is look at the maximum conductors of any particular color, which is two. And I'm going to need one for the switch, and I need one just in case I want to add something later. Uh, so I have a total of four ground wires that I need. So here I've removed about 15 ground wires. Now I'm going to partially assemble the power supply. <clears throat> here I'm plugging the fan back in and uh, putting the board back in the chassis. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not pinching any wires and um, nothing is grounding or shorting out. Um, this process is important. Here I'm putting in just a couple screws into the board to hold it into the chassis. Uh, you want to tighten them snug, but not too tight because you can break the board. Here you can see I've stripped back the, co the coating on the wire and I'm going to solder on a connection. Uh, you do not have to solder on connections. You can use crimp connections for this. As you can tell, it would have been impossible to use a crimp connection if we had left all seven yellow conductors on the power supply. When making your solder joint it's important to make sure the barrel is filled and you've got good flow on the wire and the connector. Here I'm soldering a resistor onto the long leg of an LED that I will be using for a indicator so I know when the power supply is plugged in. Uh, here we're going to solder the LED onto the purple wire, which is a 5 volt standby, so it's powered whenever the power supply is plugged in. Here I'm showing the switch, which is wired to the green wire and the black wire, and then the purple wire comes up, <coughs> goes through the resistor, the LED, and back to ground, uh, and the rest of the wires that are all prepped. Thank you for joining me for Dell ATX Power Supply Part 2. Please join me for Part 3. Goodbye.